So I've been asked to just come and tell you about the peer mentor pilot scheme um, that we've put together. And so I just kind of wanted to give a bit of a background on why we were doing it, what it involves, how we've kind of arrived at the point that we're at, and then what we're planning to do going forwards. Um, before I kind of tell you about how we came up with what we had, I thought it might be useful to say why I ended up involved. So Lindsay and I, um, Lindsay who is not here, she's currently with the Officer Training Corps starting a futures project, um, have both had what we had up until September last year called peer mentor schemes within our departments. Um, with varying degrees of success across the year, we'd had them for about four years. Um, very successful from the student mentor point of view in terms of the, the friendships that they made, um, the interaction between each other, the training that they received, but not quite so well received by the actual students themselves turning up to the sessions that we put on, although they all fed back that they liked the fact it existed um, and was there if they wanted to. Then, in September last year, when we were asked to look at something that was uh, potentially to be rolled out university-wide, we met with quite a number of people, so we held focus groups across the university, we met with people from other universities that had schemes, and it dawned on us that we actually didn't have a peer mentor scheme at all in our departments, we had a peer tutor scheme. Um, and peer mentor scheme was something completely different, where students were actually supporting each other perhaps through some specifically focused areas of their life at university. And for us, because this fitted in with the induction material, that would be the pre-arrival, the induction, and then the extended induction period. So um, some other things that came out of that that fed into uh, our scheme that we ended up with was from a focus group that we held where one of the members of staff, I think they were from Humanities, said... All we do in induction week is, is roll people in for 15 minute slots through kind of like a conveyor belt system and they kind of get told, I'm the person to speak to about, I'm the person to come and talk to, I'm the person that you should come and talk to. So by the end of induction week, they're so confused about who it is they're actually supposed to talk to about anything um, that we wanted to kind of help smooth that transition and make that a bit clearer. So hopefully through um, what we've put together we've kind of tried to overcome that by doing it in a more um, student to student way to get the information across. So in terms of this inter in a bigger picture this is one strand of multiple things which are going on around induction um, at the moment so I don't know how much people know there's a step in program which is a series of weekend events primarily targeted at home students so that they start to integrate into university over a, a series of weekends before they come, although it will be open to everybody. Um, so there's different activities going on there where, for example, they're going to have um, some futures events, they're going to have a family fun day, I think, where people can come along with their children or their parents. Um, and then there's a step up programme, which is to help students get integrated into, say, IT systems and so on. So get their iPads hooked up, get their laptops hooked up to the systems. Um, then there's Welcome Sunday. I know that is a work in progress. I'm uh, hesitant to say this on the camera. I'm 100% sure this won't happen, but in a meeting I was at, they were talking about abseiling down buildings. Um, don't think it will happen. So that's kind of like a, 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 an event just the day before term induction week starts on the Monday to get students in, to get them onto the campus, to get them excited about starting university. Um, and then there is a residential advisors scheme, which is where students in halls will be supporting other students in halls. And obviously then there's peer mentors, and then there's a focus as well all around the actual induction week and making it more fun for the students and um, making them feel more welcome. So the aim of everything really is to get the students more engaged, to support them, for the students to actually have some fun, and essentially to make friends, because really, when research has been done with students about what do you want to get out of that first week, they want to know their timetable and where they're going and they want to make some friends. They don't want to know about how to get a condoned grade, what our exam board regulations are. Um, those sorts of things are important to them later on down the line, but initially their fear is, am I actually going to make any friends on this course? Am I actually going to enjoy university? So we wanted to... Hello. <laughs> we wanted to gear it towards actually making students feel 
that they'd made friends during that week. So in terms of what peer mentoring is, um, just very quickly, because I know most of you will be familiar, it's basically using those with more experience to support those with less experience. So whilst they do act on behalf of the university, um, they do offer a distinct role because essentially the students are more familiar with how it feels to come into a large lecture theatre and sit and smile shyly at the person next to you. They can still remember that daunting feeling. So they are the experts in how to overcome that. They also have overcome it, got to the end of their first and second year and can look back now and think, actually, it will be okay. Um, so we use their experiences and also how they would kind of um, have liked their induction to be, the sort of information that they felt would be useful, that they want to feed into other students. So we've taken, hopefully, <coughs> their recommendations. So it's been very much student-led. Um, the activities that we've developed have been developed by the students. The mentoring site is being mostly run by a student. Um, the marketing around the, the mentoring scheme was developed by one of our students. So Lindsay and I really have just been facilitators of their creativity and drawing out those experiences for them to see how they can support new students who are coming in. Um, so the idea is that they'll share their knowledge and experience through the workshops that they'll put on that we'll run you through in a moment to support the less experienced students to settle in so that they do make friends, they do feel like they can be successful at university and they have made the right choice to come here. To create a sense of community, I've always thought it was really important to create a sense of belonging. I've always thought that through student societies or peer mentor schemes, um, through staff student interaction, that creating a sense of pride in being at this university is really important and I think having that student contact gives that sense of community, that sense of pride. Um, and I'll show you in a, in a short while some of the comments that have been written on the e-mentoring site by our students, which will hopefully put a spell on your face for the, the rest of the day when you see how positively they speak about staff at the university. Um, and then in terms of the actual mentors themselves, they are acquiring new skills. Um, again, later we can see which sorts of skills they feel like they've um, already achieved through the training and also to enhance their employability. Lots of employers now have mentor schemes when students arrive, so having already engaged in that, to be putting themselves forward to actually support university processes, to help new students, obviously is gonna look good on their CV. But primarily we want them to do it because we want them to feel part of the university and we want them to help each other to be successful. So sorts of things they might do is to help students settle in to provide some kind of support, whether that be actually in person or via the e-mentoring site, to people who maybe lack confidence a little bit, to get them involved. So through the workshops that the students design themselves, they've got lots of icebreaker games, lots of activities throughout the, the week, so that students do have to engage with each other, they do have to interact. I, I mean, the thing that we said to them when they were developing the workshops was, most importantly, when the students walk out of your class, do they feel as if they've made friends? Have they learnt something about the university system that you were telling them about? And do they walk out with a smile on their face, with their arms unfolded, looking confident? Um, so then there's things around library and Moodle that we've integrated into student sessions as well. And also, through the Ning site, and through the various forums that are being scheduled to go up over the next weeks to, to um, support that transition from school to university um, as well. So what they are not though, is they're not teachers, they're mentors. I think that was where the distinction lay from peer tutoring to peer mentors. They are in a supportive role, not a teaching role. Um, we kind of see them like little signposts, giving pockets of information to allow students to then know where they can obtain more information. They're not there to support the students through um, anything that would require counselling or psychologists or social workers. We've got support services for all of that. We don't need our students to act in those roles. Um, we've, they obviously don't do their work for them. They can't give advice contrary to our regulations and they can't repeat conversations that have been held in private 
unless, obviously, the mentee gives them permission. So they're not replacing any of us. We have got absolutely fantastic staff that do counselling, that do faculty student support roles, that do student experience roles. We've got unit leaders, PAC tutors, programme coordinators. We've got all of these things in place, but we do have a little bank of experts on how daunting it is to go to university. Um, as staff, maybe we don't have that um, skill set, so we're drawing on those that do. Um, so the scheme uh, itself involves accounting, finance, economics, chemistry, education. Um, I've put education studies, but it is more broad than that. It does include primary, youth and community, inclusive education, um, criminology and sociology. So what we've tried to do is get someone from each faculty so that we can see how it works um, and we can see whether it can be replicated. Already from doing this, we've learned quite a lot about how different terms work, different start dates, different end dates, different exam commitments, um, which meant that training will probably need to be reviewed when it runs to try and fit different programmes um, requirements. Uh, the students were told when they signed up uh, through the marketing campaign that the sorts of things we wanted to develop in them if they were to apply was their confidence, their leadership, their communication skills, their ability to work in a team um, and then their networking. So meeting students from chemistry if you're in economics or education if you were in um, youth and community because surprisingly I had probably very wrongly, grouped all of education together to then realise that actually the staff aren't familiar with each other and the students aren't familiar with each other. Um, so to get them to sort of see other people from the university and faculties and to share their knowledge and experiences to develop really good sessions for students. It was a proper application process, so the students had to apply through Jobs for Students, completing an application form saying how they met the... Um, job description, why they would be a good mentor. The application process then led to a selection of students who were invited to training and it was engagement with the training along with the application that meant whether or not they were ultimately selected. So if a student applied but then either they didn't do very well at training, that was nobody, or they didn't attend training uh, fully, then they wouldn't go forward for final selection. And the students are paid um, they aren't paid for attending training, they receive futures points, but they are paid for the mentoring that they do over the summer and they are paid for the actual hours of contact that they'll do in induction weeks. So um, I actually, we, we actually did a um, questionnaire with them about payments and stuff and, and it was, the students were saying that it was nice, but it wasn't compulsory. So it wasn't the reason that they were doing it, was to get paid, it was actually... Um, for the, the, the good reasons that we would want them to be doing it for, to help each other, to support each other. Um, and that the payment was kind of a bonus. But our view was, well, if we're going to ask students to do these things for us and we're taking them away from time that they could be spending working on a part-time job, we need to compensate them for that time in some way. Um, so the way that the scheme works is, as from Monday, um, next week, the, the Ning site, and I'll show you um, the Ning site live in a second, will um, be open to new students. So students from all of the faculties involved who are planning to come to MMU in September will receive an invite to join the Ning site. At this point, I have to say, um, this is significantly better than when it began, thanks to um, a student from education who has now been recruited to work on Ning. Um, and so the students will receive an invite. When they sign up, it, they will say which course they're in and it will drop them into their student forum. So they'll have access to the main page and access to their individual student forum area. So um, I'll show you on the uh, actual site because it's a bit clearer. So this is our home page. Um, each week there will be new forum updates coming on to keep it fresh, to keep the information um, relevant to what the students will be doing at the time. So, for example, um, around results time, there'll be forums about results. Um, uh, at the moment, the next one that's going to go up will be around exam stress and coping with exam stress because they're doing their A-levels. Um, and then we'll move on to things like accommodation, student finance. And so we're going to keep changing what the students are able to talk about on the site so that every time you come back, there's something fresh going on. 
Um, we've also got videos which are up there which have been done by the students which are just talking about their own experiences on their course, how induction went for them, some of their anxieties that they had. Um, and they'll be changed every week as well. And then we've got the students' top tips running down the side um, about what they're recommending students to do. But reading through what makes MMU great, um, you can see that some of the things that they say that obviously are there ready for Monday when the new students start signing up are really, really lovely. So the fact that we're really inclusive, the fact that it is a culturally diverse university that encourages people from diverse backgrounds to be involved, that we support them, that the staff are inspiring, that we motivate them. So, you know, hopefully when the students come, they'll uh, be reading through those and feeling quite excited. Then we've got subject forums for each of the areas. Um, and within here, we've got different forums again that will be going up. So the main page will have one and then each individual subject will have subject forums. And again, the students themselves are starting to write things on there about their courses, about how they find them, about what goes on on the course. And they'll be changed regularly. And the students obviously have to keep logging in to make sure that they're stimulating the discussion and keeping it going and contributing. Um, so the students will obviously be doing that from home about one hour a week from Monday to September. So that's our support for the pre-arrival transitional period. We know that there's lots of this goes on in the student room, on Facebook, but we wanted to give them an area that's completely closed and private, where they can chat to each other, where they can interact directly with students from their courses, from MMU, um, and ask anything that they're concerned about, and maybe start to create communities before they arrive. Then when the students actually arrive in induction week, um, there will be a series of 50-minute workshops delivered by the students themselves. Those workshops were written by the students during the training. So on the Monday of training, on the first day of training, um, we brought in lots of different university services people to tell them about the roles that they do. The students then went off working in groups of about five to prepare lessons which had um, icebreaker activities, were um, interactive and actually got information across to new students, sort of top ten tips or top five tips or things that you should take away. Um, those sessions are to be delivered in induction week and then four sessions over the following two weeks of extended induction. Um, the sorts of topics that they've done is campus tour, library, <coughs> Um, how to get the best out of lectures and seminars, so what's the point of a lecture, how does it differ from a seminar, how should you prepare, time management skills, money and finance, starting university, and that one then sort of merged into why Manchester's great, student union and futures, MMU greats, which is about our current staff, our alumni, people who've studied here, uh, so they can start to, to find out again why the university is so good. And then things around professional bodies, so if you've got PSRB extension, uh, exemptions and so on. Um, so they were the topics that the students designed workshops around. They then delivered the workshops for critical feedback from each other for them to go away, refine them. Um, we were really nervous about how this would go, but the student workshops were absolutely exceptional. They came up with sessions that were far beyond what we would have thought to include what um, maybe we would have come up with, partly because we perhaps haven't got the time to sit down and spend being as creative um, as they are, or maybe because, and I'm probably just talking to myself, we've forgotten how to do it to a certain extent, to be, um, maybe, to try new things, to do things differently, and they were just <coughs> confident to do it. Um, they delivered the sessions, as I say, they got feedback, and then they went away and reviewed them um, for final sort of submission. We'll create... There's an online area running that the students can access all these lesson plans once they're finished and they'll also get hard copy handbooks um, for them to sort of follow the lesson plan during their induction week. So things that we would recommend is not that library goes in induction week because the majority of students say that's not really when they want to find out about the library but they do want to find out about it once they're getting into the term. So maybe kind of the second week of extended induction. But things like... Um, 
start in university, why MMU is great, student union and futures, things like that are the sorts of activities that we put on an induction week. So they can get a flavour of things that they can do and uh, about settling into university and about some things that they might encounter or should be aware of. So the students earn futures points. They get 10 bronze points for um, the first day of training where they're receiving information and then 23 silver points for the, the consecutive two days. Um, so this training was actually divided up. So 7th, 8th, 9th of May, we trained all the education students and then 28th to 30th, we did the remaining students. We also did some students from law during that period. There is then a two-day residential, which again, because we adapted the programme for education and their different needs of their students, we um, condensed down into a one-day leadership activities day, uh, which we've already run, using Lick from the business school. I don't know if anyone knows them. Yeah, they were one of our students. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then 19th and 20th of September, we're taking the students off again with Lick to a scout camp. Um, and they are going to do some outdoorsy activities and start to develop their leadership skills was what we asked them to do because we kind of felt that although there are programmes in the university that do develop leadership skills or units that do, actually we do a lot around team working and giving students the opportunity to lead within their programmes of study is, is quite difficult. So we wanted to build those skills into their training with the leadership because ultimately they're going to be leading these classes um, and we wanted to get them the confidence to do that. So things that they did, were exam for example, were blindfolded, having to move water and direct each other, um, having to uh, rearrange themselves. There was the spaghetti marshmallow tower building. So I don't know what's happening at the scout camp. I dread to think. I think it might involve lots of mud. Um, we put residential in quotation marks because we are actually going to bring the students back. If they've got accommodation in Manchester, then we will encourage them to use it. If anybody is really stuck, we'll look into finding them accommodation. Uh, we were going to let them stay over at scout camp, but it involved camping, and we were a bit concerned that some students might not come for that reason, and that wasn't really what we wanted. Um, and then there's project planning. So... The people that have been involved, so it, it wasn't the, the Hannah and Lindsay show, it was very much uh, bringing in other people uh, from across the university. So International Society Student Services and Learner Development came and gave sessions. Then we had counselling coming in to talk about setting boundaries. Um, recruitment and admissions came to talk about safe social media use. They are now being really supportive of the Ning site and helping us put together the content plan for it and how that can coincide with their um, admissions run of information out to new students. Finance came in to talk to students about the frequent queries they get, what sorts of financial issues do students have, scenario examples and how they would um, perhaps direct them to the appropriate place to deal with it. Then we did some sessions about what should be included in the lesson, lesson how to deliver a lecture and engage an audience using the, uh, David Shirley from Acting, and then some training on the e-mentoring website. So um, that was kind of their first day. And then, as we've said, we had the team, team building <coughs> leadership activities, and then they were reflecting on what they had learnt, how they'd improved during those sessions. We've also asked them to plan a social activity. We gave them a budget of zero, <laughs> Because the actual budget is £100, and that's not £100 per person, it's £100 for 2,000 students, <laughs> so essentially zero. Um, we wanted them to do something on the Friday of induction week. They, again, came up with great ideas. Um, they suggested like a cultural picnic where everybody brought some food. Um, they suggested having lecture theatres booked out to show films and just have popcorn and stuff for people to come along and watch a film together during that week. They said that they wanted a home-cooked meal on the Friday um, and that they would all come in for a roast. Um, and uh, Lindsay and I have been talking with the people from uh, MMU Sports to look at putting on a silly sports day on the Friday where we'll do things like egg and spoon race, um, space hopper race, 
wheelbarrow, three-legged race, um, and involving Met Munch as well in sort of facilitating that event. So hopefully that will be going on on the Friday, and we can integrate some of the students' ideas as well. So you might see some uh, MMU records being tried to be broken around campus. That was another one that they'd suggested, MMU record breakers. Um, they had to develop a business plan for that. They um, were... You know, they couldn't just sort of say, this is what I think. They actually had to, to write up that to develop those skills as well. And they had to deliver a pitch, and then the students voted on the ideas that they thought were the best ideas. And Lindsay and I have a very long list to go through at some point. Um, and then we voted on which idea was, would win. So most importantly, what did the students think of the training? So this is where we're up to now. Training finished on Friday. Um, is that 100% of students would recommend to a friend that they were to get involved, so that was nice. And all students saw, because we sort of said before, how did you rate your confidence, how did you rate your leadership, how did you rate your employability, after. All of them saw an improvement in their confidence. Um, this is their word cloud, so you can see they are talking about leadership, communication, listening, confidence, having come out of the three-day training. What we hope is that that will be even more extended uh, when they actually deliver the sessions for real life to students that those things they picked up in training put into practice and then the realisation that they can do it um, will kind of become even bigger in their lives. So going forward, obviously we will review what happens. We're considering a phased rollout across all of the departments. Um, everybody obviously will be able to interpret schemes as they want. There, there is not a plan to impose any sort of requirement on departments to use this scheme that we have developed for our departments. Um, I mean, one of the things that we've definitely learned by going out to faculties is that that is a bad idea. <laughs> um, so it will not be imposed. It may be that all departments are encouraged to have a form of mentoring which um, involves, you know, proper training, proper structure, but can follow whatever is suitable to your department. So English have something different. I know Laura working on something this year. Um, so it's definitely not going to be, this is what you do. Um, in chemistry and accounting, finance, economics, there are um, sort of tentative plans to look at extending it to academic tutoring, which we've had before. Um, and there are some sort of staff looking around in economics and accounting finance around how can we support the students with their maths and their quant skills um, and looking at the best way to do that and how we can get students engaged in it. As for the other departments, I know they're planning to use their mentors at various key points of the year, so options, um, exams time, to again go through sessions and boost the students' confidence. So... Um, that's kind of how, how, where we're up to. I guess once September comes, we can see whether we fall flat on our faces. Um, is that a question or a strand? Is it no sort of question? <laughs> can, I, can I ask a question? Mm. I, I think, I, I can't believe all this has been going on. And if you know about it, it just sounds um, excellent to me. But what I'm concerned about is given the proximity of all the students, when the accounting and final students are doing their silly sports day and our management students aren't doing anything. I'm just wondering what the <laughs> impact is going to be and, uh, and if, you know... I it is in Sugden, so they won't see him. <laughs> I know what you mean, you're talking questions. So there's no opportunity for anybody else to get involved, which is a shame, really. I guess because for this year it was, you've got all of those faculties coming together on that day, yeah. that the logistics of that are quite difficult. Uh, I mean, like, we've asked for things like a 5K around the campus, which obviously everybody could get involved in, but apparently, no, can't shut roads. Um, um, so, so I think if it went forward, then yeah. that Friday activity needs to be perhaps more reflective of the Welcome Sunday of something which is more campus-wide that everyone can get involved in. Um, I, but the MMU, if we, if we go with uh, record breakers then the plan would be that there would just be various activities going on around and there would be no reason why any students couldn't go and have a go. Because I, th I think one of the things that um, was noticeable to me, and it came, it was a comment from one of our colleagues in management, was that when we've done, we did induction last year and the year before, that they'd gone up the road to see their son who was at the University of Manchester and it was all happening and exciting going on and we got back here and ours were just queuing up getting their ID cards. <laughs> I wonder whether it's going to be even worse that half of our students are all involved in the Sunny Sports Day 
and the rest of them are queuing up getting their ID cards still, and it just makes us look even more boring. I mean, maybe, maybe that we should do something that's more the record breakers then that everybody, you know, it's going on around, and there's no reason why people can't stand and watch or have a go at like so going for a minute. Because this thing about making friends, it, it's just so important, isn't it? You know, I mean, we've got the students coming back who've been on placement, yeah. they've not been here for 12 months, you know, their friends have, who've carried on and done the three years aren't here, so effectively they're joining a, a new cohort, so making friends is just so important, you know. The other thing about it is that the, the, we're still talking to the sports guys about it, but when we've, they've been fantastic and they've got some really interesting ideas. I think they would be really keen to actually get out in that week and, do and meet people who are from lots of different yeah. programs. Because it's what I hadn't realised. I thought sports was the same as Sugden and the same as the you know the student union societies, but they're keen on giving yeah. people a go at kind of things. Exactly. So actually, I think there is probably potential to. Yeah. yeah, so I, d I don't want to sort of like hijack your agenda or anything, but I just wondered if you could share a little bit with us so that we don't look yeah. quite as crap as we might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe there's opportunity for the UGCs to talk yeah. to Yeah, I've got a meeting today at 1 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next up, Mark Bagley, Lindsay and Hannah. Can I ask you three questions, short ones? Where, where do you get your funding from? Mm -hmm. um, secondly, do you think this might clash with the student rep and the training that they're doing there? And also, numbers, we are the meth bunch and we're still waiting for your numbers. <laughs> How many are you expecting? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's 500. Look, so, um, what was the first question? So the, the, there was a funding paper put in by Penny Rennick upwards that was costed out for I think originally it was supposed to be, the idea was the people moving to Burley Fields, this was a new experience kind of coming there, plus us kind of tagging up onto it. Um, and so there was a set kind of pot of money that we got for it. And it, it's interesting kind of what we budgeted for. We are sort of being a bit more flexible on what we've done. The, the student who is running the Ning website is phenomenal. We couldn't, we couldn't be without him if we got budget for paying for students. <laughs> uh, so to get to the bit about the budget, we've still got to work out how much money we've got. Go and tell you, but I, I um, we can get back to that. What was it? Oh, the student reps. Yeah, I think it's a different role. Isn't it? Yeah, I think it is different. I think the student reps have act as the student voice going forward. Um, they kind of don't, although they will be part of induction in terms of um, recruiting them. They don't have that same role, I think, as these will have, which is more of a supportive role, sort of um, facilitating the making of friends. I know that sounds a bit ridiculous, but... <laughs> it's just that, you know, sometimes my comment is actually they should have this because the student kind of like reps, if they have confidence, leadership and all these are skills... Oh, the student should have the training? Yeah, oh, and actually, right. because I'm just, at, at some point, they might just look at these mentors and say, why are they getting paid? Well, I'm not. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess that that student union would have to say, yeah, we'd like to sort of adapt some of the training, but... I think it is different that they're going to run at least seven sessions. Whereas it, for my guys, it's them and then 20 students. And that is different. I think being a student rep, we just send something around on Facebook and try and gather. Oh, yeah. okay.